Our survivors were snug in their warmest attire, all safe and content near a roaring fire. They feasted on cookies, cakes, and gobblers, underneath trees decked out with festive bobbers. Come dawn, they celebrated the light from the east, and sung together now, happy winter's feast. Let us rejoice, everyone, and maybe bring some holiday cheer through death. The death of gingerbread, that is. These gingerbread pigs will pop into frame on occasion, and chances are they'll be doing a lot of catching their breath as they're about as skittish as a mob as they come. So much so that they even leave behind parts of themselves in the form of cookie crumbs, which also just so happen to be how we hunt and follow these little guys. So continue to do so, and you will have an 80% chance to discover a gingerbread pig village full of three to five gingerbread pig houses here. Houses that serve no other purpose than to be hammerable for five additional cookie crumbles, one to two holiday cheers, and the potential to witness even more death on this very joyous day. That is, if you didn't already murder them for three cookie crumbs and one holiday cheer outright, as it is indeed an option as always. But old up, Beard, what about the remaining 20%? Well, let's just say that these gingerbread pigs can be lunch for something else besides us. Gingerbread Vargs. Posting the same stats as a normal Varg, minus the ability to spawn extra help, of course. Gingerbread Vargs can still be just as dangerous as they've got glaze, folks. No, not kidding. Similar to Neukus, these guys can cover us in frosting to immobilize us for a few seconds for free damage on their end. But thankfully, we can be freed by other players or followers at the end of the day. All in all, however, they're pretty darn easy to kite and dodge as long as you're not a bearded idiot like me, so get three hits in and run over and over and over again for two to four cookie crumbles, five to seven holiday cheers, and one to three hound teeth each and every kill. But what exactly do these drops do for us, you ask? Not much, unfortunately. Not by their lonesome, I should say. Cookie crumbles hardly restore anything and spoil into nothing in a single day, while holiday cheer is indeed edible, but it literally restores nothing. No, no, no. To get the most out of the ladder, we need to cook. Winter's Feast style. Masonry ovens will be available to craft right off spawn and grant access to the Winter's Feast cooking tab that will be chock full of new dishes. And as you can see, they all will be requiring holiday cheer to craft. Thing is though, it's all a lie. The only way to consume all of this quote unquote food is through Winter's Feast tables here and their connected feasting mechanic. Also available straight from spawn, feasting at these tables comes with a varying regeneration effect and lingering buff that's tied to both the number of players feasting at once plus the total number of different dishes being quote unquote eaten. The buff will persist for a bit indicated via a player sparkling so enjoy 0.5 health per second, 10 sanity per minute, and 75 hunger per day potentially. And fun fact, if you die with the buff enabled, you yourself drop a holiday cheer. Make notes. But I don't know about you. Eating fake food has made me hungry for real food. So thank Alter for Winter's Feast treats, am I right? During this event, most everything in the game will have a 20% chance to drop a random treat in addition to their normal loot. And while most of these treats will restore next to nothing in terms of stats, there are some surprises here. Plum pudding and apple cider are considered veggies, therefore Wigfred cannot partake. Heavenly eggnog is actually a meat item, so work won't be able to drink it, and all three can slightly impact our temperatures overall, so there you go. And yes, since none of them spoil, and no one will eat internal fruitcakes, one could actually combine both of those things and use it all as bait if you do so choose. Furthermore, gingerbread cookies, sugar cookies, candy canes, internal fruitcakes, and chocolate log cakes can all be used to decorate Winter's Feast trees as well. So don't count them out quite yet. And allow me to expand on that last bit, yes. Festive tree planters are also available to craft now and can house evergreens, twiggy trees, and birch nuts forever once all three complete their growth cycles, mind, but fully decorate them, and you'll have a chance to take part in a cheeky and sleepy process that sees Charlie, I mean Santa, leave behind gifts for good little imps. Said gifts can vary in loot as seen above, and you have to wait upwards of four days between sleeps for the best stuff. However, the most important thing is 
just how well decorated our trees are. So it's a good bloody thing we've got a lot of options. Festive baubles here can drop from all mobs beyond tentacles, frogs, and killer bees 0.5% of the time, are found in Claus's loot stash, of which we'll talk later, and can be fished from the Oasis Lake itself. Festive lights only drop via deer clops, claws, and the Oasis Lake, and not only last for a whopping 160 days, they can refuel light sources and power mush lights and or glow caps here. Magnificent adornments are next, and these are about as easy to amass as any of them, as they drop from every boss killed every single time, including the new ones, mind. And heck, the Celestial Champion has five adornments tied to IT itself, for Pete's sake. Adornments for events that haven't even officially been playable for years are also a thing, but you will have to have slept under a fully decorated tree to get them. And finally, two sentimental adornments tied to Pearl's quests and Bottle Exchange help round us out, so go get them all. And perhaps Let's wrap a few as presents for all your friends, yes. Folks, before we go and have some big bad fun, we have to talk about the most OP thing in all of Don't Starve Together, gift wrap. Not only do we get four wrap per craft, the stuff is available immediately, it's cheap as all heck, and is essentially bundling wrap in everything but name. So use it wisely. But to truly wrap things up neatly come the boss tweaks. Deer Clops becomes Feast Clops during this event, and gains the ability to fire flipping lasers out of its eyeball. Berger takes a trip to the Himalayas to pursue a career in snow cone making. Moose Goose takes the goose that thinks it's a moose thing way too far, even including its children in its delusion. Dragonfly gains baubles for eyes. And lastly, Claws and his gem deer bring the bling. But while the latter's fight doesn't change a wee bit, his loot stash does. It not only spawns day one and all year round now, now, the thing drops two additional packages to boots, and one will always drop two electric milk and some cookies of some sort, while the other will drop adornments, baubles, and lights. Enjoy it all. And there you have it, everyone. Winter's Feast 2022, and the very last update for Don't Starve Together for the year. Thanks so much for everything. Well wish it to all. Happy holidays in real life, and I will see you for the skins. Bye-bye.